Hello and welcome. I had a need to mill some extra long mortises in the edge of lumber that I'm using for a new dining table, the construction of which will be posted to my channel very soon. Using a router with an edge guide might have been the first choice, but it wouldn't have worked very well with the router perched on the narrow edge of the timber, and trying to clamp blocks on either side of the wood to build up the width would have been tedious and repetitive. What I needed is an adjustable mortising jig that could slide along the lumber and allow me to cut a groove of any arbitrary length. I had seen a mortising jig on YouTube made by Young Ji, and I apologize, sir, if my pronunciation on that is incorrect, and I thought that it would fit the bill with a few modifications. For anyone who would like to view the original project, I'm including a link to that video and Young Ji's channel in the description section below. I highly recommend you check his videos out. They cover a nice mix of project types, the videography is excellent, and the final products are really above reproach. Highly recommended channel. I based my router jig on his design, but I made a number of changes which I'll call out as I go along. This video is intended to be a bit more instructionary than some of my previous videos, and as such will run a little bit longer. If that's not your cup of tea, no harm, no foul. Maybe go find something else to watch. I started out with a plastic sheet, approximately a quarter of an inch thick and measuring 12 by 24 inches. In order for this jig to work properly, you need to accurately measure the exact center of your sheet in both the horizontal and vertical planes. My plastic sheet although sold as a 12 by 24, was actually about an eighth of an inch short in both directions. All of the slots that I ended up cutting in the sheet were spaced in from the sides one inch on all directions to ensure that there would be adequate material along the edges and reduce the likelihood of breakage. In total, there are 11 slots cut in this plastic five each down each of the long sides and one long one right down the middle. Okay, to recap and fill in some of the gaps, my sheet was 23 and 7 eighths by 11 and 7 eighths. I am laying out for one inch wide stops to be located at either of the two short ends. Edge of the slot that will control the fence and therefore the thickness of the workpiece is approximately two inches in from the outer edge. The inside slot, which will allow the router base width to be adjusted, is inset four inches from the edge. For the center slot, I measured an eighth of an inch over from either side of the center line leaving a quarter inch wide slot. On that center line, the layout that we did on one side is set out exactly the same on the other side in mirror image. All of the slots are inset one inch from the long side. The center slot that runs down the middle of the board is three quarter of an inch wide, so you measure three eighths to either side of the center line to get that slot distanced. And then the slots that run down the length of the board are similarly inset from that center slot by one inch. So we're going to cut five slots down each side, two on each end, one in the center, and two more on the other side and then another five in mirror image on the opposite side of the board. All right, next step is to score the center line in both directions on the board, and this needs to be done very, very accurately. Make sure to use a fresh blade in the knife 
and to take my time doing the layout so that I would be exactly on point. You don't want to score so deeply here that you weaken the plastic. You want a, a nice crisp line. You want a very distinct score cut, but again, not so deeply that you're cutting through the material. end up with is a perfectly centered nice crisp cut right over the marked lines that you made for the center. Alright, for cutting the slots I used a router table with a fence and I very carefully measured and took time getting the fence set up so that when the plastic was pressed up against it I was in exactly the right position under the sheet. And because the sheet is translucent, I could tell where the bit was starting to hit the plastic. And I just snuck up very gradually on that line and took the cuts through the plastic in two passes. I didn't want to run the risk of chatter from the bit, you know, throwing the plastic out or carving up the ends. So I just snuck up on the line, took two shallow passes through the plastic, and made the slot cuts each set of slots make sure you cut you know the two on one end that you need all the way through using the setup you've already got in place and once you're satisfied with those flip the board end for end and do the other two on the other side then getting the next slots done is just a matter of moving the fence back a little bit. Do shallow passes, get the next two cut, get them pushed all the way through, flip the board end for end, and do the next. center slot was the same deal. Get the fence set up accurately. I don't have a three-quarter inch wide straight cutting bit, so I set up two passes on either side of the line, just straddling it, and finish the cut. The excess plastic was just cut away with a utility knife and then I refined the opening a bit with a couple of files. The stops at either end of this jig, as I mentioned before, are going to be one inch wide. So I had some Baltic birch plywood and I just cut some strips down that were one inches wide. The two end stops for the jig needed to be cut at exactly the same width as the plexiglass, which would, in my case was 11 and 7 eighths. The two strips were then glue laminated together to give me the required thickness. I did go ahead and cut a 45 degree angle on the top part of the strip because, you know, we're not cavemen, and even though this is a shop fixture, it's okay to do a little stylistic flair guess maybe the two stops on either side that ensure that the router runs parallel to the center slot do not extend all the way to the edge of the plexiglass but it is important that they be centered left to right and I went through and marked the center of the slot on each one in three locations transferred those marks to the top and then marked a center point for a hole to be drilled For the sides of the jig that actually grip the workpiece, I'm using some pieces of reclaimed one inch thick plywood. Um, they have a plastic coating, I guess, on one side and 
that I think will help make it easier to slide work pieces in and out of the jig. These two pieces will attach using the outermost slots that are cut into the jig. And so I just laid it out centered left to right and then marked those positions on the plywood. To attach these to the jig, I needed to find the dead center of the plywood so that I could drill a hole in the exact center of that slot location for some threaded inserts to be installed momentarily. These threaded inserts are made out of steel, and by installing them in the edge of the plywood like this, I'll later be able to use threaded rod to attach these panels to the underside of the jig. With the stop supports now dry, I can measure out a one inch wide section in the middle of each one of them that will later accept the stop itself. I just used my miter saw to cut out the inside section for the slot. I suppose I probably could have also glued shorter pieces together and left a slot in the middle. That would have avoided me having to do this extra step, but uh, this is how I did it. With the sides of the slot cut, then it was a simple enough matter to just break it out of the center and using a chisel, clean up the opening and make it square and flatten the bottom out. I suppose you could also cut this slot with a dado blade or with the regular blade on your table saw by nibbling it away a little bit at a time. I then temporarily clamped the guide supports to either end of the plexiglass sheet, pre-drilled and you know put a countersink in for a short drywall screw that would actually hold them together. The stops themselves are short lengths of plywood that are one inch wide, and I created a slot down the middle of each of them on the router table, and for safety reasons I did this in two passes. On the end of each of these stop slides, I glued a small block of plywood that will actually be the stop. On the stop supports, which I had previously attached to the plexiglass backer, I went ahead and drilled a small pilot hole down the center of each of them. Using that pilot hole, I could flip it over and use a Forstner bit to hog out a small recess on either side to accept the head of a carriage bolt. I needed a similar recess on the top side, which would allow me to thread a machine nut down the carriage bolt and clamp it to the base. With the top and bottom recesses cut, I could go ahead and drill the hole the rest of the way out for a 3 8 inch carriage bolt. Now before I got on to assembly, I took the time to give everything a good sanding, knock off the sharp edges, make it a little bit easier to handle, and put a couple of coats of clear polyurethane over it. Now these kind of finishing steps are certainly not a requirement, particularly for a shop jig. But if this is a jig that you're going to be using regularly, and you have to pick it up and be reminded every time you use it that you cut corners and you didn't do the final finishing, it's not as pleasant to use. So I would highly encourage you to take the time to just do a little bit of finish work on the back end of it and make it a nicer jig to use over the long haul. You're also going to want to go back and darken in the score lines that you made earlier in the plexiglass sheet. I just used a sharpie for this. Okay, here's all the parts before assembly. The plexiglass sheet with all the slots cut, holes, everything prepped the two stops with their supports, the two guides that hold the router parallel to the center slot, and then some jig hardware.
jig assembly is pretty straightforward. You just attach the two stop supports on either side of the jig from the underside using some drywall screws I used in my case. As I mentioned earlier, I'm using 3 8 inch carriage head bolts and because I cut quarter inch slots in the plexiglass, the square part of the carriage head sits very nicely in that slot and it prevents the screw from turning when you go to put the knobs on it. The router side guides go in next. Um, these are held in place with a carriage bolt, the washer, and then a small thumb screw on the top. And I put three of these down the length of this jig. The stop slides install from the top, but the carriage bolt comes up from underneath through that hole we drilled earlier. And then you run a machine bolt down from the top into that little pocket that was cut out, and that's what clamps that machine bolt tightly in position. The stop slide itself then drops in over the top of that machine bolt with a washer and a thumb screw to hold it and clamp it tightly when you need to set it at a particular stop depth. Now, in full disclosure, one of my stop slides was really tight. Um, it was actually rubbing on the machine bolt that ran down the center, and I think it's because I was slightly off center when I drilled that hole. And to fix that, I just used one of these, I don't know what they're called, flexible planes. They're made by Stanley. They've got serrated teeth on them, and they work really well in situations like this where you've got to clean out an inside section like this. You could do the same thing with a file, but this works a heck of a lot quicker. It took a little bit of fine tuning back and forth a couple of times before I got these glides to slide smoothly in the slot. Um, but once they were fitted and trimmed and working properly, they worked great. So just drop a washer in over the top and then slide a knob in that provides the clamping action. And now I'll be able to stop these at any point along their length. Next to go on were the actual um, I guess you'd call them materials side clamps, the, the parts that actually grip the material and hold it centered in the middle of the jig. And using the threaded inserts that I had put in earlier, I faced the nice slippery plastic side to the inside and used the same kind of knob and washer to hold them on on either side of the jig. And I ran into a little bit of a problem here. I realized soon after assembling it that I had made my router side guides just a little bit too long and they interfere with the knob that I wanted to use. So I had to take it back apart and trim a little bit off the end of each one of those uh, in order to make the knob work the way I wanted it to. Now I made a little goof here. I did not take into account the thickness of the carriage bolt head. And because I cut the material for the, uh, like the stock clamps to be right up against the plexiglass, it meant that you couldn't move the carriage bolt back and forth anymore because you hit the material. So to deal with that, I just pulled the stops back off and using the table saw, cut out a groove down the center of each of them that gave room for the carriage head bolt to pass underneath it. Now I needed to take off about an eighth of an inch across the length of these two pieces of plywood, but I did not want to cut all the way to the end on either side. I still needed that to be tight to the plexiglass,
so that when you tighten down the thumb screws, it would, it would hold the way it was supposed to. So to accommodate this, I just basically laid the piece down onto the table saw and raised the blade up through the material until it came all the way through. After the slot was cut out on the table saw, I could finish the rest of it with just a regular handsaw. With those slots cut, now you can see the carriage bolt easily passes through where I needed it to. Now I deliberately made this jig extra wide. Um, I wanted to be able to sit a 6x6 six six post, for example, in the center of this thing and be able to route down the middle of it. But what that meant was that when you, you push the two stock clamps to the absolute centermost position, you were left with a gap in the middle of about an inch and a half, which precluded ever using this thing for thinner stock, like three-quarter material or half-inch material. So to address that, I cut a pair of auxiliary fences out using the same material. I just drilled a hole through the middle of each of them, uh, both aligned with the outer fence and the inner fence piece, and that way I could take these on and off the jig as needed with a couple of thumb screws. With that auxiliary fence on the inside attached to the fence on the outside, you see here now I can bring the two fences together and completely close the gap in the middle. This will allow me to be able to do routing on thinner stock than would normally be possible. And when I want to do something heavier, I just undo, back off a couple of thumb screws on either side, pull off the auxiliary fences, and then I've got full width when I need it. Now to get the router dialed into the jig and set the two router fence guides on either side to the exact width of the base plate, you're going to want the router to come down in the absolute dead center of that middle slot. And the best way to do that is with an alignment tool like this one. It's just, it's, this one happens to be a half inch thick and it tapers down to a very, very sharp point and allows you to plunge the router down and determine exactly where that bit is going to hit on the underlying material. Now to perform this calibration, I took a piece of stock and milled it to exactly three quarters of an inch wide and then down at exactly the three eighths inch mark, marked the center of that board all the way down its length. Next up, you take that stick that you just marked the exact center of slide it into the jig and I just use a pair of bar clamps on either side to hold the two fences tightly in the center and keep that board that I marked tied up against the plexiglass. Then all you do is loosen up the thumb screws on either side of the jig and slide the center back and forth until you line up the scribed mark that you made earlier and darkened with a sharpie with the line in the center of that board. Now this alignment needs to be as close to perfect as you can get it. And in my case, I would start out on one end, get myself pretty close, find that I was off on the other side by a little bit, so I would then loosen up the thumb screws on that end just enough that I could slide the jig top back and forth and get that line exactly over the center of the board that I marked. With the jig itself, correctly aligned to the center of your board, now it's time to bring your router in and get the router correctly aligned to the jig. I started off by roughly guessing where the router was going to hit that center line and adjusted the stops on either side so that the router was held tightly left and right 
tighten down one side, slid the router down to the other side, and checked the same on that end, and made sure that the router would move smoothly back and forth through the jig. Next, starting at one end, I would plunge the router down and see where the tip hit on that center board. And obviously you can tell here I was quite a ways off. To fix that, I just loosened the stops on that one side and slid the router over while holding the two guides tightly against the router base, tightened the two guides back up, and then rechecked where the plunge location was. And as you can see, I'm pretty close, but I'm still a little bit off. I still needed to move, you know, to the left another, I don't know, <laughs> tiny, tiny amount, a 32nd of an inch, you know, half a millimeter, something tiny. With another slight adjustment made, I plunged down again, and this time found that I was exactly centered on that line, right where I wanted to be. Once I was pretty close to perfect on one side, I would tighten the guide down on that one end, pull the router over to the other side, and repeat that same operation on the other side. And invariably, when I would shift one side slightly to make a little bit of an adjustment, I would find that that also threw off the other side by just a hair, just a tiny little amount. So it was an iterative process going back and forth several times, making slight tweaks to the position of the router within the frame until I had both ends exactly where they needed to be and locked down securely. After going back and forth several times, getting the adjustment just right, this is what I was looking for. The router to plunge down in the exact center of the board at both ends and in the middle. I could then take out the center guide and install a regular half inch wide router bit and make a test cut and see how it turned out. Now to test the cut itself I just used the same board that I use for alignment. So with a half inch bit chucked up in the router I made a plunge cut, ran it down the length, and took a look at the results. And I was very pleased to see that what I had was a beautiful mortise cut exactly down the center of that board. And here's that same board, but with a slightly deeper plunge cut. This same jig also works beautifully well to cut dovetail pins on the end of boards. So if you want to create a floating or sliding dovetail, this works very, very well for that. To do that, you simply remove the auxiliary fence and put a spacer in between the fence on either side. And I, I just used my bench clamp to hold everything together but you slide your piece of material up between those two shims right up against the base of the plexiglass and get it clamped down into place. Then with a regular dovetail bit chucked up in your router, you simply run the router down and mill the pin on one side, flip the board around 180 degrees, and cut the other side. The result is a lovely cut dovetail pin exactly centered across the width of your stock. Now you could of course make a cut like this on a router table but on long pieces of stock such as the one I'm doing here that's kind of clunky to do particularly if you've got to stand it up on end and try to hold it in place while you run it through on a really high fence this works a lot better for this type of cut all right there you go nice mortise slash dovetail pin cutting router jig <laughs>
It includes integrated stops on both ends of the jig that will allow you to control very precisely the width of the dados that you're cutting. The material fence is easily adjusted with thumb screws over a very wide range. You can get material into this jig that's at least six inches wide and it comes down to as narrow a material as you could ever want to safely route with a router. The auxiliary fences come on and off very easily with thumb screws on either side and that provides easy adjustment across that whole range of motion. I just wanted to say thank you again to Young G for his excellent plan and for sharing the video of his build. I hope this video gives you some ideas and inspiration if you decide to go ahead and make your own version of this particular jig. I know this is going to get a lot of use in my shop.